after a couple years where Viacom is, has CBS and Viacom decided that it'd be better to split the companies in two. Correct. The theory at the time was that CBS was a little slower growing. It turned out to be the opposite. Why did everybody get it wrong? Um, well, I'm not going to talk about Viacom in a, in a pejorative manner. Look, at, at the time, we were the slow growth company. We owned a TV network. We owned a bunch of radio stations, we owned a billboard company, we owned TV stations. Um, the other side had Paramount Pictures, they had MTV, they had Nickelodeon. We liked being the underdog. We liked it, okay, you know, it's via grow and via slow, that's what they called us. Um, our market cap has grown about $12 billion since then. You know, we grew a lot, we've done extremely well, our stock price has gone up considerably. Um, I think we're very competitive. I think we figured out the internet space. We figured out how to put our content online very quickly. So uh, it's been a good decade for us uh, in, in terms of the growth. Going forward, many times people who get uh, cable services, they have a cable contract. Now there is what they call cord cutting. They don't really want to get all of these cable channels. How does that affect you? Well, there, there are a couple of things that have changed. Now there are things called skinny bundles, okay? The average home right now gets 180 channels, and they pay approximately $100 a month for that. So some of the operators said, wait a minute, people are paying for channels they never watch. So they do what's called a skinny bundle, which is they put together the 30 or 40 best channels, charge you one-third, $35, $40, and you buy that. We will always be a part of that, the skinnier bundle. Then the third segment is we now have our online service. So for $5.99, you can get a thing called CBS All Access, which is basically every show CBS has ever produced, the entire library, our current schedule, plus now we're beginning to do original programming there. So okay, so um, a lot of this is done, therefore, on streaming. That, that Correct. Those but are streaming services. Now, uh, shows, uh, companies like Netflix and Apple and Facebook and Amazon, they're in the streaming business. Right. Um, is that going to cut into your ability to get these best talent because they have so much money they can pay crazy prices? It is a challenge. They, they are very competitive. They are spending a lot of money. At the end of the day, we produce most of our own content now. We have to be very competitive with them. Money alone doesn't lead to good programming. What we like to say is you can't program by algorithm, you know, which is part of what Netflix does. And they do a lot of programs. They're doing 75 mm -hmm. original programs, and they put them out there, and they have a certain amount of hits. Our job is we have to be a lot more concise in what we're producing for our audience. And as I said, creatively, I think we're as good as anybody, and that's what wins the day for us. You know, it is tough. We're competing with companies that are, you know, that could, that could eat us alive So, for financially. example, Apple is gigantic financially, and Amazon, and so forth. So you're now relatively modest in Correct. terms of your market capitalization compared to them. So it's your talent, your skill that you think makes you able to compete? No question. In addition, it's broadcast. Broadcast, people say broadcast is dead. It's not. It's still the only place you can go to get 20 million people a week watching NCIS or the Big Bang Theory. So if you're an advertiser, and you want to reach an audience, you still need the big guys, the big broadcasters. 